guys, Nick Clark from Pen Nationwide in the Hunter Valley, and right now I'm sitting with two professionals in the real estate industry addressing the big elephant in the room. So guys, at the moment there's been a lot of negative feedback about the market dropping, the market crashing, but we're here to address that factor and really find out what's happening in the marketplace. So guys, I'm here with two professionals in their field, Benny I from Nectar Homelines. Benny, thanks for coming here, mate. My pleasure. Um, and James Hanna, my associates, which is also heavily involved in local government in Maitland. We're seeing a lot of negative media at the moment about the market crashing, the market falling, and doing this. Guys, the market's not crashing, the market's cooling off. Would you agree with that, guys? 100%. So what we've had the last two to three, four years, the market's been absolutely booming. So at the moment, we're seeing that little bit of a change where it's starting to cool off. Um, it's not as buoyant of what it was. Um, and that's a few things. A lot of people referencing that towards the GFC. Guys, I come into real estate in the GFC, and it's nothing like that. Times were much harder back then. Um, the market's referencing nowhere near the GFC levels. And to talk directly towards this Maitland market, because that's what we're here for, um, is that Maitland market in that GFC, we still had the mining boom, so we were still going strong. And Maitland's always been strong. The biggest drop we've really had in the market has been that carbon tax, and we had a lot of unemployment in that mining industry. And that was around that 2011, 2012 mark. But even in the tougher times in the Hunter Valley here, we only saw minimal drops, and that was only in the sort of western side of town near that mining community where we saw maybe a 2 to 3% correction in prices, but still staying strong in that Maitland market, we saw prices really sort of cutter along and stay stagnant from where they were, and that was even in the hardest times of the marketplace. So guys, Maitland's still booming. James, do you want to tell us a little bit of Maitland and what the future's got, mate? Yeah, Nick, absolutely. So Maitland, um, for quite um, a number of years now, has been a key growth point for the state government. It's the fastest growing inland city in New South Wales. Um, the state government's investing billions of dollars in infrastructure, so is the federal government. Um, we've got a new hospital being built in Maitland. Uh, multinational companies like Stocklands are investing in Maitland. They've just finished the new Green Hills. Um, Nick, companies like these don't invest this sort of money unless there's going to be some return for them. Maitland's population growth has been on average around 2.2% over the last year. Um, people are buying houses to live here. Um, when the population continues to grow, demand for property is strong. Um, as we all know, prices only do one thing and that's go upwards. 100% yeah, right James, and even in the infrastructure side of things, I mean, the government has spent over a billion dollars in the local area with Green Hill Shopping Centre, the hospital site, which everything you just referenced there. Now you wouldn't spend a billion dollars in an area you think that's gonna start re reducing Absolutely. prices. Absolutely. Um, and along with the, the new builds, uh, the employment is probably one of the strongest. I mean, I don't know who you've seen, mate, but I would say employment's probably at its peak at the moment, um, and towards the strongest. How, how do you find it with um, the finance side of things? Nick, we've definitely found that, um, you know, since the, the turnaround of the mining industry after the carbon tax of 2012, it did take a couple of years to recover from that. Uh, employment in the Hunter, and, in, and it goes far, as far as to say as all of New South Wales, is the strongest it's ever been at the moment. So they're really kicking some goals and um, there's some really you know sound ground levels and bases for people to build their wealth upon at the moment with a um, fantastic job. Fantastic. And I know that we're hearing a lot in that sort of finance side of things. It's getting harder to get loans, valuations, um, and that's causing a bit of a, a cool off in the marketplace at the moment. Benning, what would you sort of advice would you give owners that are getting a little bit worried about that finance side of things? Is there any options that they have at all? Sure. There's some there's some key factors at the moment as far as as far as mortgages go. Um, for a start, there's people talk about mortgage stress and, 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 and people are worried about mortgage stress. Mortgage stress is caused by um, higher interest rates. Now, interest rates have been at the lowest they've been in, in Australia's history. In fact, they've not only been the lowest hour in history, they've been at this point for two years, which is the longest time in history we've seen the lowest rates in history. So it's um, no, mortgage straight, uh, no mortgage stress there. You can also lock in your interest rates at the moment, still at, for a five-year fixed rate at 3.98%. So that'll protect you from any future rate rises or any out-of-cycle bank increases that the, that the banks are imposing try to increase their profits. So you can protect your home, you can protect your family, you can protect your lifestyle by locking in your rate for three or five years. And that, that's amazing, Ben. Like for five years at 3.9%, I mean, obviously they're looking at it going, well, they can't see a massive change in the economy over that period of time. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really worrying where, where people are getting this negative media from. Because um, from the finance side of things, it sounds like everything's moving along. 100%. Banks would not be offering these five-year fixed rates if their long-term forecast weren't for lower interest rates for some time. Fantastic, mate. Well, so it's great to know we've got some really great interest rates. Benny I from Nectar Home Loans is here to have a chat if you are interested in guys locking in your interest rate so that you are confident in where you can go in that housing marketplace and just have that security. But guys, we're looking at a few things. Well, one, 
finances are looking strong. Um, there's still quite great interest rates out there to be had, and I can't really see a massive change in that length of interest rates. Can you, can you, Benny? If they're offering five years at 3.9%, surely they're not seeing a massive rise in interest rates over the next few years. Exactly right. So banks are obviously very clever and we, they have you know, from very clever people uh, working out what the interest, rate, interest rates are going to be over time. So uh, if there was even an inkling that rates were going to go up the next sort of 18, 24 months, banks would have the five year rates that you know, wound up to 4.5, 4.8%. So the fact that they're willing to, um, you know, to offer these rates is a great indication that rates are going to stay there for some time. So Ben, one of the things I've been noticing in the marketplace at the moment is we're having a lot of people getting knocked back with finance um, and finance seems to be a lot harder to get. Can you just explain why that is the case and maybe is there any options that we've got to try and push things through a lot quicker? Sure Ken. So when we talk about um, people talk comparing the current market to the GFC uh, that we had you know, nearly 10 years ago now or over 10 years ago. It really is a totally different market. Banks are very responsible in the lending at the moment. They are making it harder for people to get loans, not easier. So the banks are playing a very responsible role uh, in, in tightening up their policies of lending. It can become problematic for buyers who are trying to you know, get to that extra level to yeah. buy a house for 455, 550, whatever it might be. The reason for this is banks are scrutinising living expenses and spending habits of clients. So they're actually asking for your bank statements. So where your wages go in, they're going to want to see a bank statement and see all the spending habits you um, are actually spending on, on your day-to-day -day life. So no more Avo and Avo and toast and coffees, mate? No, no, no more Macca's drive through yeah. anymore. So <laughs> if you actually go for a loan, you need to, at least three months before, really tidy up the spending habits and keep them at a minimum because banks are really cut, going to town on that and they are declining a lot more loans than they have before. Uh, but, you know, as far as a... As a, as, a, as a broader picture, this is actually healthy for our economy, that they're not just handing out money willy-nilly and what, they don't want to see people crash and burn. And I completely agree, Benny. I mean, although we are seeing the market call off at the moment, I mean, in other terms, it's great for the area. Like, I mean, James, could you touch on, mate, if the market kept going the way it did for another sort of five, ten years, where are we at? Absolutely, Nick. So, um, with, yeah, specifically in Sydney um, and Melbourne, those capital markets, more specifically in Sydney, um, if prices had continued to grow at the rate they did last year, by 2028, so in 10 years' time, the average price for four-bedroom, two-bathroom house in Sydney would have been $2 million. And $2 million is just totally unfathomable. Um, but for something in Maitland, a, a sub-capital market, again, a non-capital, so not Sydney, not Melbourne, a regional market, um, it's healthy for our economy here. Good economies, good markets have peaks and troughs. The measures that the government's introduced, such as the abolition of stamp duty for purchases up to $650,000 for first home buyers, um, the incentives for new builds and um, the massive restrictions on foreign investment loans. So um, you can't be, it's very, very difficult now to be a foreign national and buy an investment purely in Australia. Um, and what was happening was people were leaving it vacant for months on end, or years on end even. Huge restrictions on that has opened it up to local buyers, so it makes it more competitive. And in the long term, Nick and Ben, what that means is that for us here in Maitland, it's so much more healthier because we've got a more stable market. Regional markets, markets that are focused on employment, like Maitland, are far more stable in the long run. We have peaks and troughs, but they're nowhere near as dramatic as areas like Sydney and Melbourne. And you're 100% right, James. So in those peaks in the marketplace that we had, Sydney was seeing increases of 20, 30%. Um, in the Maitland marketplace, I think the biggest increase we saw was around that East Maitland marketplace, which was about 10% in the 12-month in the period. So guys, we, Maitland is a great place to invest your money. I mean, it's a stable market. And that's probably one of the biggest things that we're talking about now is that we don't see those high rises, you don't see those big falls. I mean, the biggest fall in Maitland, I, I believe, has been about 2 to 3%, if that. And that's been in sort of one of the slower marketplaces. Maitland is still the most affordable place to live. It's still got a great economy. Guys, they're investing billions of dollars in the local marketplace. So as for the, the big crash in the property market, guys, it's not crashing. It's cooling off. The banks wanted this to happen. The local government wanted to see this. We couldn't see prices keep going up and up and up and up. Otherwise, your kids and their kids and the kids for us will not be able to afford a house. You'd be literally living in a one-bedroom apartment that's going to be costing you nearly a million dollars. So I'm really happy they've actually bring this in. The market's cooling off. It's great for the economy itself and some really good things in Mountain to be had. So, Benny, thanks for coming in, mate. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. James, thanks for having us, mates, and discussing local economy. Guys, any questions you do have, feel free to give us a call on 0423 
53914. So guys, thanks for watching. Any questions you've got, please get in contact with us and we look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you.